Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I wanted to uh, do my Bible study early this morning. I picked up two new books and I'm excited about them to, for us to use with our morning studies. Um, one is a Charles Stanley day-by-day -day reading and the other is Experiencing God Day-by-Day. And this one is written by Henry Blackaby and Richard Blackaby. So if you guys are interested in maybe getting one to follow along, you can. Um, the great thing that happened to me was when I picked up the one from Charles Stanley, and it's a copyright of 2018. They had a sale on, and I got it 50% off because they had a Christmas sale on. I don't know if you'll be that lucky or not because it lit, the listing price is $22.99. I got this book for like eight, a little under $9. It was crazy cheap. So it is a beautiful book, though. And, of course, you don't have to have one because I'll be uh, reading it out loud to you anyway. Um, their verses are referenced to versions of the Bible, some of them. Did you know that every version of the Bible is copyrighted except for the King James Version? So I will probably read, because I like it, it's my favorite anyway, I'll probably be reading that out loud um, in the mornings. But we're going to talk about Romans 1-1 one, one this morning. And uh, I'm going to flip to there in my King James Bible. And um, so y'all just remember that when you're referencing uh, Scripture, you don't have to list the scripture reference, um, where it comes from, if it's the King James Version. All right, so we're going to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Today, I'm flipping to there now. Hope you are having a blessed day. I always manage to get on here on Mondays. I'm, and every week I think I'm going to do better. We just have such a crazy schedule. Um, and lots of times if I don't get on here early enough, once everybody gets up and then I get started on something else and it's hard for me to come back to Bible study um, and I need to try to set a time for it, you know, but every time I set time, something comes up and then people get discouraged. And so I'd rather just come on when I can come on. OK, and then y'all can always tune in and listen to it late, later during the day if you need to. Um, this is a, a letter from Paul to the Romans, and um, the, the scripture for this is, For I long to see you, that I may impart, which means give, unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established, strengthened. So he's letting them know that he longs to see them, and um, he's going to write them this so that they can be strengthened and encouraged, okay, as Christians. And this is Romans 1.11 in your Bibles, okay? So now I'm going to read the reading. Um, I think this was in my day-by-day by, day by the uh, this book. It's uh, Henry and Richard Blackaby, and it's called Experiencing God Day-by-Day. And this one is 1699, what they have on the back of the book. Um, it's the, both of these uh, books. I looked at it a lot. I'm really funny when it comes to day by day readings. I don't like to learn from people that are just bringing stuff out of their head or their own experiences. I don't know why. I just don't. I like for it to be something that comes from the Word of God. Um, I personally like the way men write. Uh, I can't help it. That's just how I'm made. It seems that my spirit just seems to, it resonates with my spirit more. I don't know why, but it does. Um, so I'll be, that's why I chose these two books. Okay. One is Charles Stanley. And of course the other one, their last name's Blackaby, B-L-A-C-K-A-B-Y. Okay. So it says imparting gifts. And this comes out of the Blackaby book, which is experiencing God day by day. And it says, um, your life affects those you have contact with. And wherever, uh, whether you intend for it to affect them or not, okay, it may be a positive experience for them or a negative one, but your life will affect others. Uh, Paul wanted to give a spiritual blessing with other believers. He had heard of the Christians in Rome 
and he longed to go to them and build them up in their faith. It says he always mentioned them, but he actually hadn't got to see them yet. Um, while he waited for an opportunity to visit, he wrote them a letter, a letter to the church. Of That's what Romans is. Romans is a beautiful book in the Bible. His letter to the Romans is one of the most cherished and challenging books in the New Testament. We should share Paul's goal of leaving a spiritual blessing with everyone around us. And we should. And we have the opportunities to strengthen our power. Uh, I was think, think of this when I say this. Now, this is a big deal, okay? It says we have the opportunity to strengthen our parents, our children, our friends, our co-workers, and our fellow Christians. Um, when you think of that and the fact that you have the ability to strengthen the people around you, um, it really puts it in perspective as to whether or not you do it right, you know. Um, spiritual blessings are not given haphazardly, but by choice. Our self-centeredness may cause us only to seek the blessings from others rather than to impart them. Only when we are determined to focus on, a, on giving a blessing rather than receiving a blessing, will we have the quality of a ministry to others that God gave to Paul. Um, it says you may not realize it, but your life has the potential to bless everyone you encounter. Are others strengthened and encouraged in their faith because of their relationship with you? Do you usually look at others in terms of what they can do for you? Or in terms of how you can encourage them? As you go about your day, strive to be a positive influence on everyone you encounter. Now, I'm going to give you an example of uh, something I've noticed uh, from the new church I go to. And an example of this on um, strengthening others, okay? Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But we should all strive to encourage others. Um, because nobody wants to be around somebody that's always complaining. And uh, I'm just like everybody else. I complain too at, at different times in my life. Um, but I want to give you an example. We started going to a new church. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, there is a lady that goes to our church. And she's like the Martha. She takes care of the kitchen. She is the sweetest thing and has the sweetest spirit while she's in the church. If she comes to speak to you, um, she always makes a point to speak to everyone. She hugs them. And she loves them. And I know in her heart she loves everybody. But as soon as she goes into the kitchen, and she's been in charge, I'm imagining, of this kitchen for quite a while, she becomes a different person. And it's all about, um, she just is very dominant in the kitchen. Uh, she has a terrible attitude to towards others. Uh, when she's working for the Lord. Um, the reason I can say this is because I've heard her tell uh, mostly the young people and even me when I walk in there. Um, she likes to be in control and she doesn't want anybody in her kitchen. She doesn't want them to make a mess. and She don't want them to misplace something. And she wants to, them to follow her rules and she is very rude to them. She's not just, you know, she don't just look at them and go, Honey, you know, there's water outside. If you'd like water, you can go out there and get it out of the cooler. It's more like, the water's outside in the cooler. Now, when you talk to people like that, it's not encouraging. And I know that she has it in her to show her sweet side. Um, and I, I actually talked to her about it last night because 
Um, it matters how we treat people. Whether we're in the sanctuary, whether we're working for the Lord, whether we're in the grocery store, in the drive through it matters how we talk to people. Now, do I always talk to people nice? Absolutely not. I don't have a lot of tact, but I try. And as I get older, I realize what an example we are for other people. And I'm trying really hard. Let me just say this. If you are one of those people that serve in the church, and it has gotten to the point to where it's work, and it's something you don't enjoy anymore, um, I think you should step down. Either pray about it, and think about how your behavior is and whether or not you're being encouraging to somebody. And if you feel like you're not, you need to take some time out and get your heart right and uh, get in the position you need to be in before you step back into that ministry. It's not wrong to ask for help. I let her know last night that she needed to ask for help um, so that she doesn't feel burdened by what she's doing. OK, um, so y'all just remember that, OK, uh, that we need to be an encouragement to others. Um, and I'm one to talk. I mean, I, my personality type is a type A. And of course, I like to be in control, too. Um, but when it comes time for us to be good Christians and serve the Lord, we need to step aside from that type A personality or that personality that we have and let Jesus take control of our heart and our personality so that we can let his light shine. We have to step aside to serve Christ the right way. And we need to remember that in every situation. Okay? I hope you've enjoyed this morning's Bible uh, reading. Charles Stanley also had a reading. And I guess we could read it real quick and then say our prayer. Charles Stanley, this is a book. Charles Stanley, it's, like I said, it's copyrighted by 2018. Um, it is also a daily Bible reading, and I like both of the books. It doesn't take that long to read them. Um, Charles Stanley's reading for the day is Your Faithful Friend, okay? And it's talking about Jesus being our faithful friend. It says, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And we know that verse is Proverbs 18, 24. And I didn't, I read that version out of his. I'm not sure which version that is, but um, we all know that verse. And it says, when times are good, friends are a plenty. However, during difficult times, you may find that your friends become scarce. And that is very true, y'all. Perhaps they do not know how to console you, or it could be that they are frightened by the circumstances you are experiencing. Whatever the case, they're gone when you need them the most. But understand that God is not like that. He is the best friend you'll ever have, and he reassures you of his presence by promising, I will never desert you, nor will I forsake you. That's Hebrews 13, 5. By his nature, he is a comforter, standing by you and encouraging you through whatever dark valley you may be going through. In fact, Jesus told you to expect some storms. In the world, you have tribulation, he said. Then he adds the words of encouragement, but take courage. I have overcome the world. That's in John 16, verse 33. In other words, yes, you will have trouble, but the way to victory in it is to stay close to him. Likewise, be assured that the Lord never wastes your pain and suffering. He allows it for a reason. So if you're facing... Uh -oh, sorry. Um, it says, likewise, be assured that the Lord never wastes your pain and suffering. He allows it for a reason. So if you're facing a difficulty or a crisis, ask God to reveal his purpose for it. Then give your worries to him because he certainly cares for you. His little uh, box at the bottom says, my hope is in Jesus because he is always with me. 
Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed these morning readings by Charles Stanley and the Blackabees. Um, I hope to bring you these readings as much as I can. I have 365 of them for each book. They are true blessings. Um, and so I hope they've blessed you this morning as much as they've blessed me. We're going to say our prayers, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for men like Charles Stanley and the Blackabees. We thank you that they've studied your word and they have been led by the Holy Spirit to pin down some encouragements for us. I pray that you keep us on the right track, that we would be an encouragement to others, and um, that if we are going through a difficult situation, that we will know that there's a plan for it and have the right attitude throughout whatever, however long it takes for us to pull ourselves out of the storm that we are in. Uh, be with us as we go throughout our day. Help us remember to pray, not just once a day, but several times a day for those around us. It will help us have the right attitude so that we can be an encouragement to others. Um, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for allowing us to worship you freely here in the United States. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a blessed day. I love you. Bye.